Hi and welcome to another fun episode of playing with different pieces of apparatus. So foam rollers are so useful to have and then an additional weight is what's going to really get your upper body feeling great in today's session. So let's get to it. We're going to lie down onto the length of your roller and have your weights close by because we've got them in one in each hand. And there, it's time for you to move. So we've got head and tail supported. And then you're going to have one hand holding each weight as you raise your arms towards the ceiling. So before we start to move, I just want to check in with your lower body. So making sure that your feet are not overly wide and your knees knocked together, but that your feet are nice and parallel. And you could almost imagine them being in line with your hands and arms right now. So feeling your lower back has a curve away from the roller's edge and your neck has a curve away. And then maintaining those curves away from the roller as you now slide your arms up to the ceiling and then slide your shoulders down and around the roller. So while we move through our shoulder blades here, particularly as you're bringing the shoulders down, you're going to notice maybe a little bit more tension in one than the other. And that happens for most of us. We like to think we're symmetrical simply because we have a left and a right, but that's about the limit of our symmetry. We always have a dominant side in our body and it shows up when we do things like this. Keep the weight of the shoulders rested and we're gonna open the two arms out to the side, hovering away from the ground, so still in line with your shoulders and then bringing the arms back up towards the ceiling. So whenever I bring my arms to each other, I don't let them touch. I still keep them in the individual shoulder joints, which is going to be on the width of my body. And as you're opening out through the arms, you're going to notice again the shoulder blades coming in closer to the roller and you'll feel that that one side potentially is a little bit more present than the other. So open and return. And then the next time we open the arms out, you're going to maintain them here and then you're going to draw your arms into the side of your body, keeping the height away from the floor and back to shoulder height. As we take it to the width of the shoulder line, that's going to be challenging for your proprioceptive system because we're trying to find where we are in space. And if you do this mindlessly, sometimes your arms will not get into the right position and it's much more comfortable to take them a little higher up, but that's not the alignment we're after. And then holding here, you're going to raise your right arm towards the ceiling and then raise your left arm and then lower your right arm down and then lower your left arm. And then we're gonna change arms. Left arm leads up, followed by right. Left arm goes down, followed by right. And then again, right side high, left side high, and right side low, and left side low. One more time as we bring the left arm to the ceiling and the right arm to the ceiling, and then the left arm out wide, followed by the right. From here, send the arms all the way over the top of the head and bring the arms down towards your side. Open the arms out and bringing the arms forward. So we're making a circle. And you're just letting the arm bones roll inside of the shoulder sockets as beautifully as they are meant to do. They've got a lovely circular connection to the shoulder joint. And then as you get your arms to the overhead, we change the direction, bringing them in and then floating them up and over behind. So I'm only working with a kilogram weight in each hand and already my arms are starting to feel a little bit warm and tingly. So you can work with any weight that works best for you, but don't go too heavy because we're doing a lot of things that require a lot of strength through the shoulder joint area. One more time, bring the arms straight up towards the ceiling and here we're gonna double bend the arms. So elbows are facing the sky and then knuckles face the sky. So a little bit of tricep strength as we straighten into the arms and tricep length as we bend into the arms. And we'll just have two more of these. And then last one, raising up high. From here, you're gonna keep your left arm where it is and you're going to fold your right arm into a right angle position. Your knuckles are gonna make it next to the left elbow and we're gonna repeat that bend of the arm and straightening up. So just keeping the connection of right knuckles to the inside of the left elbow joint, keeping your left arm nice and high and then last one, 
And then you're going to bend into the right elbow, into, uh, sorry, into the left elbow, and you're going to fold it across the right elbow, the uh, right <laughs> forearm, and then back open again. Too many parts of the body to remember, I tell you. So we're just opening and closing, as though we're opening and closing a door. And you've got two more, so we're doing a nice gentle spinning of your upper arm. And then last one. And then from here, we're going to straighten that arm and raise the right arm. So bending the left arm now, connecting it in towards the right elbow crease, and then right arm goes down and up. So again, your feet are steady for you, but you're not wobbling all over the place. And the upper arm of the right is staying as still as possible as we're just working from that elbow joint. And then one more time. And then we're going to fold the arm to a 90 degree bend and then lay it across the left forearm and then open it back out again. And again, drawing it in and out. So the spiraling motion happening on the upper arm, we're targeting some of our um, shoulder muscles here called the rotator cuff group. It's a combination of muscles all working to keep the head of the humerus in its shoulder joint and then raising the arm to the sky, and then the other one there. So from this movement, we're gonna finish with a little scissor of our arm. So one goes back, one goes forward. And then just feeling how the weight wants to take your arm very quickly down to the ground. So part of this exercise is actually resisting dropping your arm backward or slowing the movement down with gravity and the weight. And we'll just do another scissor to each arm. and then returning yourself all the way down. So we're going to re release the weights and then just go for a stretch. So aiming your elbow tips out to the side and your fingertips towards the ceiling. And then from there, we're going to allow both forearms to rotate backward toward the floor, getting a nice stretch coming across the front of your shoulder line and then bringing your arms back up again. And again, easing your way back so notice what happens to other parts of your body as you're trying to take the arms behind you. So sometimes you may notice that your head starts to jut up and forward. So feeling the back of the neck or the back of the, sorry, skull pressing down against the roller, checking that your ribs have not lifted away from the roller, but you're feeling settled through the back um, ribs of the spine. And then releasing from here. We're going to just move those weights out of the way as we now take ourselves into a side lying position. So we're going to use the roller as our head piece. So being comfortable here as you lie onto your side. And I challenge you to use one or both depending on what you'd like to do. So if you want to work a little um, heavier and you only have the kilos, then just grab both in one hand. I'm just going to choose to work with one today. So your arm is going to start lying next to the side of the body and we're going to send that arm all the way over toward your ear and then bringing it back towards your side. And again, it floats over the top and it comes back again. So nice simple movement, just the arm waving through the air. I like to think of a whale as it waves to us as it passes through the ocean. And then last one, long and bringing it back. All right, so from here, we're gonna bring our arm all the way out in front. And then we're gonna raise the arm up towards the ceiling and then turning back to look towards your weighted hand and then bringing yourself forward again. So into a book opening shape. And again, raising the arm up and looking backward. We've got three more of these, and as you do this, remember, you can do this with a shorter lever. And I'll do that for our next two. I like to call that a bow and arrow, where we pull the elbow back and look behind, and then reach the arm forward in front. And again, pulling the elbow back and bringing the arm forward. From here, we're going to bring the elbow into the side of the waist, and you're going to begin with your knuckles facing towards the front. So I just mentioned that those rotator cuff muscles, we're gonna be really targeting them here. You're gonna lower your forearm down, knuckles to the floor, and then knuckles back to the top. And again, down, and just pausing at that horizontal line. 
So feeling the work happening into your upper arm area and of course the back of the shoulder. And you've got two more of these and then one more and hold it here. Now from the horizontal we go up and then back to horizontal and lift and lower. Now this movement is not a huge movement so you're not trying to take your arm so far that you start to roll in your chest or that you bend in your wrist. So it's just a small range of movement up and down. And then we're going to go for the full range as we lower the forearm all the way down, knuckles down and then knuckles forward and up and then swinging gently through that arc of movement. This is deceivingly challenging. So remember if you've got the heavier weight, maybe drop a weight down if you need to. And we've got another two to go. And you may notice that my arm is not completely connected to my waist. I've got just a little bit of space away as that I had a little newspaper tucked underneath my arm and then bringing it all the way back down. <laughs> all right, time to go to the other side. Let's go. Oh. So as you come up, you're just going to roll over to the other side or do like me and change positions so that we're still looking at each other. So in your side lying shape, Again, head is supported, and remember it's not in your neck crease, it's right at the base of your skull. Your top arm is holding onto the weight, and then from here we're going to send the arm all the way over towards your ear, and then bringing the arm back down by your side again. And again, sending the arm up and across, and bringing it back down. So, I like to work out with my dog. Maybe you have an animal at home that's working out with you too. It's amazing when you get down on the floor with them, they just like to play. And then one more time as the arm goes all the way back and then bringing it through. So we're gonna send the arms into a parallel position and we're gonna raise the arm to the ceiling and then turning back to look at your hand and then rolling yourself forward again. So important things with this one, of course, is to not roll backward with your hips and knees, but to feel almost like your knees are going forward as your arm is going backward. And as I've mentioned before, gravity wants to take your arm down fast to the floor. So you're gonna slow that motion down and I'm not letting my arm even get to the floor. I'm still in a horizontal position away from the mat. I'm gonna to switch to do the bow and arrow for the last two as you pull your elbow out and back. So I keep the elbow bent as I look behind me and then reach the arm forward in front. So it's good to vary up what you do, especially with weights, because different positions will give you different strengths. And then from here, we're gonna bring that elbow in towards the side of you. And as I mentioned, don't lock it in, have it just floated above. So knuckles are facing towards the front, and then we're gonna aim the knuckles down, beep, beep, and then bringing the knuckles forward again. So rotating inward and then back again. So as we do this, there's just a set of five of each and then holding your upper arm nice and steady, two, and then last one, and then we change the direction. So we're going to rotate upward and return to neutral and up and down. Oh, we're almost gonna do the full one bear. You might need to move again. So as we're rolling backward, again, you'll be feeling lots of energy in the upper arm. It starts to feel like a little tingly, good tingle, like vibration tingle. And then here we go for the full range, all the way down and all the way up. So maintaining the upper arm in the same position according to the side of your body, but it's always rotating either forward or rotating backward. And you've got two to go. Oh my goodness, and last one. Oh, and then bringing it all the way down. Oh, you deserve a rest through those arms. We need our weight. It went rolling away from us. All right, so we're heading to standing up and we're going to be working on some serious balance. So please be mindful with these movements. Um, if your balance is not at the position that you're ready for yet, just don't do it with the roller, just use the arm work instead. So we're gonna take our roller and we're gonna put it into a long position and come up to standing. Make sure you've got your weights with you. And you're going to place your arch of your foot into the roller's um, top edge. 
And you can't see that because Bear has decided that he wants to be in the video quite significantly today. So arch of the foot is supported and we're just going to begin by transferring your weight onto your left leg. You can keep your toes in contact behind, but ideally you're going to have the leg leave the floor and then lower your body, your foot back down to the ground. So we stand up. This is like taking a step forward or a step up. So think about just walking in your life. If you have to climb up a pavement or climb up a set of stairs, this is the same action going on. So as we do this, we're going to take our hands towards our shoulders. And as we stand up, we're going to reach the arms to the ceiling and then bringing them back down. So again, please be mindful of your own body. If anything is feeling too challenging, then go back to what feels a little bit more controlled. And we've got two more of these as we reach our arms above. So really important how your alignment is through your body. You don't want to throw ribs forward. You don't want to stick the leg out too much behind you and then bringing it all the way down. So we're going to do the same move now on the opposite foot. So the first few is just getting you prepared. Maybe you've never stood on a foam roller before. So we press down through the arch, find toes to still be behind you, and then can you hover them and stay balanced? And then returning down. And maybe that's where you need to stay. Maybe you don't need the roller at all, or otherwise you're just feeling, oh, I can do this. I'm pressing down through my foot and I'm getting light in the top of my head. So we're gonna add the arm work now, same arm motion. As we stand up, we reach the arms and come back down. And again, lengthening through and softening in. And another three to go. So checking in that when you're standing up, you're not locking your knee joints out because if you lock your knee joint, you've got no way to find balance. You just lose all that support from the foot through to the hip. And then I lost count, sorry, we're gonna do one more just in case. And then coming all the way back down again. So our next one is a little bit more challenging again. So we start with the arch of the foot on the one side and then you put the arch of the foot on the other side. Now there's a roller underneath you in case you didn't realize, which means there's gonna be forward and backward motion happening constantly. Again, if you lock those knee joints out, you're gonna fall forward or backward. So make sure that there's always a little bend in your knee and the movement to change will be happening through your feet, right? So there's a little roll forward and backward. You're not trying to do anything. You're just trying to stay steady. And then once you've got your steadiness, let's let those arms travel up towards the ceiling, inhaling ideally, and then exhaling, bringing them down. And I'm only gonna do three as we raise our arms up, but you are welcome to do as many as you want to in the series. And then last one, lifting up, strong through your feet, light through your arms, bringing it down, step backward off of your roller to be nice and safe. And that, friends, is all I have for you for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you again soon.